guys. How are ya? I've missed you. It's your girl, Jackie, from the Financial Literacy Tribe, coming at you with a brand new video. Oh yeah. So for today, I was thinking that we could talk about what is, in my opinion, the five ways for you to get your financial life together. The inspiration for this came from a good friend of mine who I was having a conversation with. Um, and she basically proceeded to tell me that she felt as though she was just one of those people, air quotes, um, that is doomed to forever be a financial hot mess. Um, and I respectfully disagreed with her. And the reason for that is because I feel like I was for the majority of my life a financial hot mess. I know tons of people that have been historically a financial hot mess. It doesn't mean that you have to live the rest of your life that way. Um, basically, by you sitting there and even saying something like that, it's you accepting defeat and just deciding that you are okay with being broke for the rest of your life, uh, being uh, severely in debt for the rest of your life, having a subpar credit score for the rest of your life. It's like you don't have to accept these things just because you've historically lived your life that way. There is always room for improvement. There is always room for change. And I can attest to that firsthand because I was definitely a part of the financial hot mess club for a long time. So if you are one of those individuals, like I was, who is sitting there reflecting on what are the things that you can kind of do to no longer be a financial hot mess, these are the five things that I feel like you should do. AKA, get your financial life together, sis. Get it all the way together, okay? Let's jump right in. Step number one, set financial goals. Uh, my favorite quote from the book, also the movie, Alice in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll, um, is basically where Alice is asking the Cheshire cat like where she should go because she was lost. And he wisely told her, if you don't know where you're going, then it doesn't really matter which way that you take to get there. Um, and I kept that with me and it really resonated with me because you have to have goals. There's no way for you to move forward in life if you don't know what it is that you're trying to achieve and what it is that you're aspiring to. So definitely be sure to sit down and self-reflect and really think about what are the long-term goals that you want to smash and what are the short-term goals that you definitely want to accomplish during your life. And these should be specifically financial goals. So just as an example for the short term, um, it's probably a good idea to really think about what are the major roadblocks that are stopping you from living your best financial life now? What are the things that are stopping you from really being your best self in terms of finances in the now? So does that mean that it's a very large uh, credit card debt perhaps? Um, or a very large student loan debt or some other kind of debt um, that you're paying toward on a regular basis that's really stopping you from having the amount of extra income every single month that you wish you had? Do you just feel like perhaps you don't make enough money? Like, do you just feel like there's just not enough money to get from one week to the other or one month to the other? Whatever it is, you have to sit down with yourself and really be honest and establish what are the things that are really stopping you from living your best life right now and that should kind of gear and steer the way in terms of what your short-term financial goals should be whether that be debt eradication or making more money you know whatever it is you have to sit down and kind of figure that out in terms of long-term goals um you have to kind of figure out where it is that you want to be in the future what is it that you where do you want to be 10 15 20 years from now uh 30 40 years from now where do you want to be uh, at what age do you want to retire? What kinds of things are you going to be doing after you no longer have to work? Are you putting your kids through college is a good question. Um, where do you want to be living once you no longer have to work? Um, so these are all questions and things that you should definitely be thinking about. And that'll hopefully kind of steer you in the direction of identifying what types of long-term goals you have with regards to your finances. But definitely you cannot move forward unless you set some goals. <laughs> 
My pro tip in terms of goal setting is maybe you find that you're much more of like a visual person or even a tactile person in terms of learning abilities. And if that's the case, then you may want to consider just like sitting down and creating some sort of a vision board. If you're not familiar with what a vision board is, it's basically just like a board or a piece of paper where you actually stick pictures of the things that you want to have within your life. And it serves as basically a very visual reminder of where it is that you want to be. So maybe instead of sitting down and writing it down or typing it on an Excel sheet or something like that, you could create a vision board instead. And hopefully that'll help inspire you to set some goals. Step number two is a not very interesting and I bet you could already guess what I'm going to say before I say it. Uh, step number two is you have to create a budget. <laughs> I at this point feel like I should just like tattoo the word budget on my forehead because I talk about it so much um, but I am team budget yo I'm team budget you need to have an idea as far as how much it is that you're spending on a monthly basis and what it is that you have coming in in terms of income it is a necessity in order for you to be on top of your finances you cannot just be flying blind and not knowing how much it is that you're spending and how much it is that you're getting. So definitely step two in getting your financial life together is sit down and create a budget. There are lots and lots of different types of budgets. I have lots and lots of videos on all of the different types of budgets. So definitely there is a budget to fit your style and personality type. I can promise you that. So just scroll through my videos and we will find the best budget for you. I can promise you that. So definitely, Step number two, you got to make that budget happen, buddy. Got to do the budget. Step number three is have an emergency fund. This is huge. And you may be thinking to yourself, well, Jackie, I have other financial obligations, like a lot of debt and blah, blah, blah. Shouldn't I be trying to do those things first? To which I say, no. No. You should always do the emergency fund as soon as you possibly can. And that's why I have it as step number three on how to get your financial life together. The reason that it is so important is because you do not want to be making strides toward paying off debt and saving money and doing whatever it is that you have to and then run into some sort of uh, an emergency like the tires on your car flew off or your roof caved in or something crazy like that. And then you have to pull from the credit card again or the line of credit on your mortgage or some other inconvenient place in order to cover that emergency. Things happen, life happens, and we have no control. And unless you are psychic and your name is Miss Cleo, do you guys remember Miss Cleo or am I like dating myself right now? Call me now. Anyway, um, you probably are not gonna see it coming. So definitely it is a smart idea to have an emergency fund of three to six months worth of your spending how much it is that you spend on a, on a monthly basis. You should have three months worth up to all the way up to six months worth saved away, stashed away so that something were to happen, at least you have the money to cover it. So an emergency fund is a must have. Step number four on getting your financial life together consists of getting rid of that consumer debt. Boo, consumer debt sucks. I'm talking about those excessive credit card amounts where you're getting charged an extravagant amount of interest. I'm talking about car loans. I'm talking about personal or payday loans. Get rid of them all. These are bad, bad, bad forms of debt because the interest is usually super, super high and it is sucking you dry and you do not need to have it. So definitely, as soon as you have that emergency fund in place, your next step is gonna be to try to pay off all of that consumer debt. Um, definitely, um, I feel like a mortgage or even student loans, for the most part, do not fall into this bucket because the interest rate tends to be on the lower side. And also it's a much higher amount usually. Um, so that's probably going to take you a little while to pay fully, completely off. Um, but definitely, as mentioned, things like credit cards, car loans, payday loans, personal loans, the things where you uh, pay monthly on like your furniture, like those types of places, the interest rate is usually bananas. So you do not wanna have that kind of debt hanging over you, just pay it off as soon as possible, if at all possible. That should be your next step. And my very last number five tip for getting your financial life together is going to consist of 
thinking through and starting to implement uh, some sort of a strategy, some sort of an action regarding retirement. So that means that we are going to start setting up some sort of a plan, whether it be contributing toward your job's 401k, whether it means taking the steps towards maxing out a Roth IRA, or even if you feel like you don't have the amount uh, in order to fully max out a Roth IRA, I think right now where we are in 2020, it's about $6,000 a year to max out a Roth IRA. If you want to just do something, you know, download the Acorns app or the Betterment app or some sort of an application, you are taking some steps toward making sure that you're saving and doing your due diligence in terms of saving for retirement. You are doing something. You're not just sitting there idle. And I do not want to hear the excuse of, you know, I just don't have the money right now. If you have a job and you're able to make ends meet, then retirement has to be a priority. I know it can be a little tricky because it feels like it's so far away. Um, but the truth is, is with something like retirement, since the goal is to save such a large amount of money, really the more time that you can put into it, the better off you're going to be um, because of something called compounding interest. Compounding interest means that time itself is going to allow our interest to multiply into even more interest, which is going to multiply into even more interest. So it would definitely be a benefit for you to start uh, saving for retirement as early as humanly possible. So definitely that is my number five tip in terms of getting your financial life together is even if it feels like it's super far away, um, we still want to make sure that we are taking some steps towards beginning to save for retirement. Even if you're not doing the full 100% of what you want. And by the way, that's totally okay, you know. Just because you're not able to give the full amount that maybe you want to towards your retirement account now or even a year from now or whatever, as long as you're making some steps, I think that it would definitely be beneficial. So don't beat yourself up. At least you're doing something, which is a heck of a lot more than some other people I can tell you for a fact. Well guys, that's gonna do it for me today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, don't forget to hit that like button. If you are not currently subscribed to my channel, then I invite you to hit the royal subscribe button so that that way you can be notified every single time I have a new video up. Be sure to check out my blog, which is at focusedfrugalfab.com. And I will see you guys soon. Bye.